This is Summer Game Fest, a live showcase of what's next in the wide, wide world of video games. We are live here in Los Angeles, and whether you're streaming from home or watching inside an IMAX theater, welcome to our showcase event. Over the next few hours, we'll give you updates on the games you love, be joined by special developer guests, and yes, have a few surprises along the way too. Now, what I love about this show is that it's a true cross-industry showcase. Whether you play on Xbox, PC, PlayStation, Switch, or mobile, we'll have games for you. It doesn't matter your platform of choice. We're all here to come together as one community that simply loves the art of amazing video games. The biggest franchises in the industry are here, like Call of Duty. You'll get introduced to exciting new worlds, new teams, and we'll make room for small independent developers who we think deserve the spotlight too. If we do this right, hopefully you'll discover a few new games to put on your wish list. And even if you don't get every announcement that you desire, let's face it, you're not gonna get everything today, but we've got a lot of great stuff. So let's get started. Over 30 years ago, Capcom Street Fighter hit arcades. And ever since, this legendary Japanese fighting game series has continued to evolve. Street Fighter VI is coming in 2023, and right now, we're excited to officially confirm a character coming to the game and show you the exclusive first gameplay footage. Enjoy. You will know what hits you. Let me have some fun. Let's get this mission started. This will be a good fight. Got two of my sights. It's all about the comb. All right, next it's time for a brand new game announcement here at Summer Game Fest. Check this out. Sergeant Leo Alvarez. 
Atlantis of the CM Leth Recon Squad. Our mission was to enter the Tantalus base, locate the ComSat relay, and bring it back online. We found the relay, but there was a problem. Get that door closed now, Private. Back her in the hall. Back. Close that door. Close that door. Nothing gets in here. Ray didn't make it. Release is a one piece. Willis, take the lead. Oh, this ain't good. What we found was a new kind of evil, and it found us first. was a human. That was Aliens Dark Descent, and it's coming in 2023 to console and PC. Next, two years ago at the Game Awards, we revealed the Callisto Protocol from the creative forces behind the Dead Space franchise. Today, I am thrilled to get to show you the first raw gameplay alongside its creator, Glenn Schofield. But first, here's the quote-unquote Schofield cut of the brand new trailer with a little more gore. Take a look outside. Did you know that they call Callisto the Dead Moon? Dead. Just like you would have been if I hadn't fished you out of that wreck. So whatever you're holding on to right there, that's your old life. You gotta let that go. Because your new life is entirely in my hands. I'm just trying to give you a chance at rebirth. that last part. Gives me chills every time. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's right. We know what you wanted to see. And joining me now, Glenn Schofield, striking distance. Glenn, uh, first of all, congratulations. This game looks absolutely incredible. And I got to say, the fact that you have built this team, this studio, new IP, shipping this December, all in COVID, blows me away. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having us. I really do appreciate it, Jeff. Um, and, you know, for a second, just give me a second. You know, I want to thank you uh, for all you've done for the game industry uh, all these years, man. I, I think I've known you like 16, 17 years now. And uh, um, you've been an ambassador. Um, you've amplified new games, new studios. And uh, I, I just wanted to thank you. I really do oh, appreciate well. it. Thank you. It's not about me. It's about you guys. Yeah, I, I know. But I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, yeah, it's so fun to do these shows. And to show this game, so people saw the trailer, but what I'm so excited today is that you just brought a raw gameplay sequence. This game is in development, and people are going to be blown away, I think, when they see it. But tell us a bit about what are we going to see today. Yeah, we got a couple minutes of, uh, like you said, like raw gameplay. Um, it's two segments in the first half of the game. Uh, one is a med bay. Another one is a power station. And you're going to see uh, some new enemies, some brutality, some uh, just about everything. We were showcasing a new uh, weapon called the grip. It's uh, like a gravity gun, but it picks up the enemies, and it shoves them into giant fans. It rips them apart. It's great. And, uh, and then check out the... Uh, the nice ending we have where we, uh, you know, we usually will kill our main character, Jacob, and in a very unique way. And uh, uh, just for a second, I, I want to thank the team, man. Like you said, through COVID, through everything else, the dedication, the hard work. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Glenn, I got to say, again, you know, what you guys are shipping this year, this looks like a world-class next-gen game. Uh, it's, it's rare that teams are bringing something out like this this year, and... Let's let the footage speak for itself. Thank you. Let's go field, striking distance. Here it is, the first gameplay of the Callisto Protocol. Oh my God, that just happened. All right, moving on. 
This October, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 arrives. Infinity Ward is once again returning to its roots for a modern day action game. And today we're about to show you the world premiere of its gameplay with a level playthrough. To tell us more, let's head to the port of Long Beach to check in with Johanna Ferris, the head of Call of Duty. Hi everyone. In 2019, modern warfare changed everything. And on October 28th, we usher in a new era of Call of Duty with the launch of Modern Warfare 2. We are back, we are bigger, and we are bringing the entire team. Price, Gaz, Soap, Alejandro, and of course, Ghost. We needed a stage big enough to debut Call of Duty in a whole new way, inspired by the world we're about to enter. Oil rigs, cargo ships, and staggering odds are just the beginning. Here is Modern Warfare 2.
of the controls. On that damn ship. Actually, we got a problem missing the controls are somewhere on the ship. You have your orders, son. Stop that launch. get early access to the open beta. That's what we're talking about. And joining us now, up from Long Beach, Johanna, great to see you. How's everything? It's great. Thanks. Uh, great to have you with us. And also Jeff from uh, Infinity Ward. So we saw the first gameplay. Thanks for that extended sequence. Looks incredible. Uh, Jeff, tell us a bit about that mission. Uh, where is that set in the game? What are we seeing there? Absolutely. So um, first of all, we're really excited to welcome back uh, Captain John Price and uh, uh, Gaz uh, Garrick. Um, you know, they're not re they're not actually in what we just saw today, but uh, they're returning members from 141. And then the other two characters uh, that were you may recognize from the older franchise that we're reimagining are uh, Simon Ghost Riley and uh, of course, uh, Soap John McTavish. Um, and then a couple other new characters in here that we're really excited uh, that we got to uh, create for this game. Um, first, uh, Commander Philip Graves and uh, Mexican Special Forces uh, Colonel Alejandro. And Alejandro, I gotta say, we're, it's a character we're really excited about. He's a guy who's super capable and a guy uh, who's just as important as Task Force 141. Um, but as far as the level's concerned, um, you know, this, I, I got a shout out to, to IW. You know, this was a tremendous collaboration across all of the, the different uh, disciplines. As you saw, everybody coming together, some really uh, motivated devs here. And, uh, you know, you saw the, the wind and the uh, animations and the awesome sound design. And 
of course, our new water tech, which is actually pushing the boat in different directions. It's creating a physically dynamic environment, allowing for the cover you are seeing. In certain cases, you could be behind cover, and then suddenly that cover would shift and leave you exposed, but it also leaves the enemy exposed, creating this emergent gameplay. Um, so again, I'm, I'm very excited. Just can't wait. That I'm so excited that we get to show it off today. And that's just a hint of where things are going to go. Uh, Johanna, tell us a bit about Call of Duty overall, Modern Warfare 2. Obviously, you know, we're so excited that it's back this year, but you've got lots going on across Call of Duty. What can we expect from you guys this year? Yeah, we, um, first of all, thanks for having us here. We're just so excited for October 28th. It's such a big moment, not just for Modern Warfare 2 and everything that Jeff and the team at Infinity Ward have built, but it really marks the step change, what we're calling a transformational moment for the entire franchise. You're gonna see incredible rendering, incredible graphics, all the things just within the game itself, built all on one shared engine now, across Warzone and Modern Warfare 2 going forward. Of course, there's a lot of chatter and interest about the new Warzone experience, we're affectionately calling it Warzone 2.0. Um, there will be um, a standalone experience of Warzone for current existing um, players as well. So we're going to sort of feed the entire community there. But all eyes on the 28th. Um, and again, I think the collaboration's just been incredible. Everybody's so excited for Task Force 141. Um, Warzone coming to mobile as well for players on the go. We're, we're on Steam, as you know. I mean, so yeah. it's just a big moment. And there's going to be a lot more to come in the, in the months to follow. Well, before we, we leave, we got to ask a little bit about Warzone 2. I know we just, you know, we're showing gameplay here on this, but can you tell us anything? There was a little bit, it seems like there was a little bit of a tease maybe in the trailer yesterday. Or yeah, when we're seeing that from the commu community, we love when the fans can pick up some things, um, some chatter about maybe seeing high rise and, and other elements. But we will get into the details of Warzone 2.0 for sure. It will be an extension of the Modern Warfare 2 universe. Yeah. So all the more reason why we think this game, this moment is, is such an important uh, title for all of us looking looking ahead and like we said we're having a bold vision around the entire future for the franchise so we're in we're in position we're really excited all right well we're looking forward to october thanks so much for giving us a first look at the gameplay call of duty modern warfare 2 thanks johanna and jeff um all right well we've got lots more summer game fest still to go and now it's time to announce a classic pc gaming franchise is coming back with a sequel over 30 years after its first release i love this game when i was growing up so i'm honored to share this very first look All right, let's turn back time. Back in 2017, we announced Witchfire at the Game Awards. Almost five years later, I am so excited that the team at the Astronauts in Poland has put together an in-depth look at the gameplay of this dark fantasy first-person shooter, which will enter early access soon. I am so excited to play this, and I bet you will be too after you see this.
Okay, next up comes an ambitious new game from a new independent studio in Europe starring some very familiar names. Enjoy this world premiere new game announcement. Officer Taylor Medlog, 29. Today, um, I can't believe what I saw. Solis, everything okay in there? That's something brand new, and look who it is, Troy and Roger in person. Guys, uh, this is so fun, the fact that you're working on a game together. What a cool team up. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Good to be here. I got to ask you guys, uh, who are your characters in this game? Well, uh, I get to play a character named Wyatt Taylor, who's a medical officer who's stationed at this uh, base, Fort Salas. And uh, it's the epicenter of this mystery that we'll discover and uncover as we go through the game. And of course, my character will be at times in opposition with Roger's character. The battle we've been waiting to see. <laughs> Every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. And by the way, Jeff, this looks awesome, man. Yeah, man. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having us. It's, it's, it's so great that you're in another game. We, I mean, it's feeling like this is your first game since yes. Red Dead 2. One of the first major ones for a while. And I play a character by the name of Jack Leary. He's a maintenance engineer on a remote Martian mining post. Okay. And his job is to make sure that none of the equipment breaks down while it's on their graveyard shift. Uh -huh. The graveyard shift meaning Mars and Earth are really far apart from each other and their orbits around the sun. So help is not a simple call away. Uh, I got to ask, I, I think a lot of people will see this thing and they'll probably wonder, you know, it's a new team, right? Uh, new, you know, independent studio in Europe that's making this, but with huge production values. I'm curious, like, how did you guys get attached to this? Tell us a bit about the background. I, I will say that 2020 to me was the most impactful year for games. It was the first, I mean, obviously we had this unprecedented event with the pandemic and that forced the way that we looked at it everything as a society, but also the way this industry functioned. Yeah. But it was also brand new consoles. We had more tools that were being made available that were leveling the playing field between like the AAA studios and the indie studios or the AAA studios. And so just like anybody else, we got reached out. Uh, James Tinsdale with this brand new studio said, we'd like for you to uh, consider being a part of this game. And he walked me through a very brief description of what the experience was going to be like. And in the very beginning, he said, it's, we want this to feel, it's a, it's a tight thriller. We want it to feel like Dead Space meets uh, Duncan Jones' Moon. And I was like, sign me up. I'm into that, absolutely. And full like performance capture and everything. Ah, right? yeah. Absolutely. New studio, brand new energy. And of course, I get to work with one of the best of the business. Jeff. And me. I get the privilege <laughs> Who's the of other? getting to see this guy and watch him in action. I, I, you know, I love to work, and I love the challenges and all the new innovations that this medium provides to performers. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. Yeah. I think it's going to knock Yeah, I guess I've seen off. some of the behind the scenes and the performance capture, Unreal Engine 5. I mean, this is it looks absolutely phenomenal. Can you give us a hint about the, the gameplay? Like, what are we going to do in this game? Yeah, the verbs are always important. So we're going to let the game speak for itself. We'll be showing you more later on. But uh, this is a game where you as the player, you're going to be exploring, you're going to be discovering. Like we said, it's a very tight thriller. So you're moving very fast-paced through this world. There'll be multiple locations, multiple ways for you to traverse, which we're excited to show you about. Uh, and then the, the narrative is a huge element to this. The, they, they didn't waste uh, any, any resources on the, the performance for sure. I got to tell one quick story, yeah. if I can. Um, it was one of our favorite moments. Um, there is a lot of action in this game, and that was at the, the, the forefront of this. And to speak to the performance capture aspect, we brought in an incredible, I gotta give him a shout out, uh, to Nathaniel, our stunt coordinator, who walked us through and really approached this in a completely different way than anything I've ever done before. And he says, I want to know the story of this fight. 
And so Roger and I sat down. We said, these are where our characters are. And he goes, give me one hour, and I will come back to you with the story of this fight. And after an hour, he comes to us, and he goes, it was like a, like a recovery program. It was 12 steps. And he walked us through this incredible fight. And I was, I, about halfway, out, uh, halfway through, I started tuning him out. And I was like, hey, man, I just want to let you know I've got no ego about this, but I can do a lot of things, but I, I can't do this. And he grabbed me by my shoulders, and he says, oh, you can, you will, and it's going to be glorious. And we did. And we it's did. It's like a dance. It was a lot of trust, and it worked out. Yeah, I mean, we're big, excited big about stunts. it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, this is so cool to see. Is it an independent studio doing this, teaming up with you guys. We can't wait to see more. Troy, Roger, thanks for joining us here. Happy to be here. Summer Game Thank Fest. you. All right, appreciate it very much, guys. All right, well, next up, keeping up with the space theme, it's time to world premiere a very exciting new game, which will feature a musical score by industry legend Mick Gordon. This one is going to grab you, and we are so honored to debut it. Doesn't that look great? That was Routine coming to Xbox and PC. It was first announced a decade ago and is now officially back. I can't wait to see more. Now it's time to check in with a very special guest who's been in his fair share of video games, including most recently Fortnite as the foundation. Dwayne Johnson, welcome to Summer Game Fest. How are you? What's up, everybody? And what's up, Jeff? And what is up to the... Summer Game Fest audience is live streaming right now around the world and everybody inside the epic IMAX theaters. Dwayne Johnson here coming at you from my iron paradise, the very hot and sweaty and smelly iron paradise uh, powered by, of course, Zoa Energy, the number one fastest growing energy drink in the game. You guys know me uh, by a lot of nicknames. The Rock, La Roca in Spanish, uh, Uncle Handsome, Sexiest Man Alive, uh, Big Drink Energy. Always room for a cheesy joke. There's always room for the extra large cheese pizza, especially when I'm delivering and I deliver them often. Uh, you guys also know me as the greatest and most electrifying surprise in gaming that happened. You know me as the foundation. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, number one, thank you so much for the crazy response of me becoming the foundation, but also I gotta say that, you know, I've had such a pleasure uh, working with um, Epic Games and uh, the teams over there, and we cannot wait to show you what we have in store for the future. And speaking of the future, in the future, you will also know me as Black Adam. Black Adam, as millions of you know around the world who know the Black Adam mythology, he is ruthless, he is unstoppable. And for those who don't, I always like to say a quick tutorial is this. Um, Black Adam has the powers of Superman, but the only difference, well, there's a few differences, but one of the biggest differences is Superman's weakness is magic, and Black Adam's, one of his superpowers is magic. So you do the math. Uh, October 21st, I cannot wait for you guys to see Black Adam around the world in theaters only. And you guys will finally see the hierarchy of power in the DC universe change. 
Uh, it has been an honor to become Black Adam, and it was a it is a role that's in my DNA and that I was born to play. I was born to play the man in black, and I'm honored to show it to you guys on October 21st. So until then, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, stay focused, keep having fun, keep kicking ass, uh, enjoy your gaming, and I'll see you down the road. This is Black Adam. Black Adam, what have your powers ever given to you? Nothing but heartache. I was a slave until I died. Then I was reborn a god. Over fire! Now, I kneel before no one. You can be the destroyer of this world. Or you can be its savior. Up to you. Behind you! Did he just catch a rocket? He got a rocket.
That was so fun to see Courage and Ray in that Fall Guys piece, and you can play and download Fall Guys for free starting June 21st across all platforms, including Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. All right, back to another new game announcement. We're going to announce a brand new game and universe from a new team of legendary developers. Check this out. Signal's breaking up. Command, I'll do one last scan. See you soon. Over. Okay, hurry. Command, I may be onto something. You could make it. We gotta move. Now. There's a storm coming. And hell's coming with it. There you have it, Tim. Congratulations. Stormgate is real. We have a name and some details. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations on this announcement. We're so excited about the return of RTS, brand new uh, franchise. What is a Stormgate, though? All right, so Stormgates are portals that open during a massive solar storm that unleash the infernal host on future Earth. Okay. Uh, and we saw some hints of some, I mean, you know, you guys coming from Blizzard and StarCraft, everyone wants to know about races. Uh, you know, tell us about the sides in this RTS game. Yeah, we're unveiling our first two factions today, yeah. but there will be more. Uh, so the Human Resistance, and we saw an archaeologist from the Human Resistance in that intro cinematic. Uh, and then also the Infernal Hosts, who are these demon-like monsters who come from another world. I think one thing everyone wants to know about, especially your background pedigree of the team of you know where do you want to push the rts genre it's something we've all loved for decades but you know opportunity for a lot of innovation um i know you're going to show us i think some some hints of where you're going to go Im image wise with the actual gameplay made in unreal engine but any sense of what you want to do for the gameplay in this game absolutely i but the first thing i want to say is we are very consciously trying to stay true to what players already love about rts um where we're really trying to push the genre and be innovative. First off, approachability. Um, for one thing, we're free to play, uh, but no pay to win, no NFTs, nothing like that. Um, just to 
lower that barrier to entry to get players in. But we're also really trying to be a lot more social. Um, so you'll be able to play the campaign cooperatively. We've got three-player open-ended co-op. Um, and we've even got three versus three for competitive multiplayer. But of course, we've also still got 1v1 competitive. And as a little surprise, I think we've got some first kind of work-in-progress images uh, from the game, right? Yeah, these are still very much still uh, being worked on, but some shots of uh, actual assets that we're building in Unreal Engine 5. Wow, well, I, I love it. Now, 2023, you said, for the beta, so people can sign up now, get ready. And I'm just so thrilled that there is a, a brand new RTS franchise coming from you guys and your background and what you did you know, at Blizzard and StarCraft. We're so excited about this team, Frost Giant. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your announcement today on Summer Game Fest. Thank you so much for having us here. Really grateful. Awesome. All right, Frost Giant, Stormgate, keep an eye out for it. Now it's time for another indie game announcement that I'm excited to share with you. High Water. Check this one out. Good morning, High Water Dwellers. High Water Pirate Radio keeping you in the know with our flow. Alphaville authorities continue to deny false rumors that Alphaville elites are planning to evacuate to Mars. True or not, the one thing we can't deny is that the world ended on a sunny day. The world ended on a sunny day Boys and girls surfing in the bay Kids clamor in the park No one suspected the coming dark The wave was coming but the sky was clear I let it wash over me Swept away, swept away, swept away What a breathtaking trailer. High Water is an adventure strategy game set in a world ravaged by extreme climate change. Now, speaking of the world around us, the conflict in Ukraine is not far from anyone's mind, and it's impacted the development of games, including Replaced from Sad Cat Studios, a Belarusian studio with devs from Belarus and Ukraine. The team had long hoped to reveal a new trailer here today, but were understandably unable to complete it in time. Guys, I just want to say we're thinking of you and all the developers impacted by the conflict and hope to be able to share your work at a future show. All right, our next game is an official selection of the Tribeca Games Festival. It's American Arcadia, where you play Trevor, whose life is being televised with the viewing population constantly voting you up or down. When you become unpopular, you need to start running for your life. Check this out. Picture a city where technology and science go hand in hand with fun and entertainment. My grandfather, Elijah Walton, had a dream to build the city of tomorrow. That dream is now a reality, and that city is Arcadia. A 43-square-mile metropolis where each and every citizen enjoys a life of luxury and comfort. Broadcast live 24 hours a day, seven days a week on every digital platform. American Arcadia. Control, subject on the run on camera 4025. Interrupt broadcast immediately. Listen to me. We can't allow Trevor Hills to escape under any circumstances. Trevor. Trevor, can you hear me? Be careful and don't make a sound. Don't worry. I'm going to get you out of there. Apparently we've made it to the beach. 
Next up is a sequel we've all been anticipating for a long time. There's trouble in paradise, and watch out, you don't want to get bitten. After many years of rumors, we finally get an update on this much anticipated sequel. There you have it, that was Goat Simulator 3 and it's coming later this year to the Epic Games Store. Now last year, Marvel and 2K announced Marvel's Midnight Suns, a tactical RPG from Firaxis Games, the studio behind XCOM and Civilizations. Heroes from the Avengers and X-Men cross over with supernatural ones like Blade and Ghost Rider for a battle against Lilith, the mother of demons. Today, we've got a look at some new folks set to join the battle. This world has no hope under your watch. Typical Parker look. I'm gonna need some backup. work. Well, it did that one time.
That was Midnight Suns, and now we're moving on to the wonderful world of Cuphead, the delicious last course. And can you, can you believe it? We're only a couple weeks away from playing the delicious last course, DLC. You see how they did that for Cuphead? Joining me now is Maya Maldenhauer from Studio MDHR. So first of all, Maya, it's really coming? It's really coming June 30th on all major platforms. We are thrilled. Well, I'm so thrilled, too, that uh, I think all the fans can't believe that this is here. And I've been... Lucky enough to play this actually on my Steam Deck uh, last week, and you guys gave me a copy. This, I, I can't. People are not going to be ready for how amazing this looks and the backgrounds and what you guys have done. I feel like you've you've amped up obviously the gameplay. It's difficult as we would expect, but the visual look you guys have taken it even to the next level, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah, we absolutely did. I couldn't pinpoint one thing that we're proud of in this because we really honed our craft, took everything to the next level from animation, the backgrounds, the music, gameplay design, um, and of course our new playable character, Miss Chalice. I'm very proud of her. Chalice is fun to play as, and, and even though this is a DLC, it feels like it's its own game inside of Cuphead in many ways. It is, it is, definitely. Yeah, you just get, get on the island, and, and there you are off to this new uh, new territory, which is amazing. Yeah, it's our biggest island yet, super-sized bosses, lots of secrets to discover. Um, don't let any rock go unturned. Yes, and lots of challenge ahead. Well, I know you brought, I, I know you want, you don't want people to necessarily have too much spoiled about the game, but you brought a little something. For a little to something, yeah. It's a brand new gameplay footage of one of our new bosses, Mortimer Freeze. It takes place in an icy arena um, and features some of my personal favorite um, attacks and transformations. We hope everyone enjoys it. All right, let's check it out. Cuphead, the delicious last course. Thanks, Miles. Now, if you want even more Cuphead, and who doesn't, tomorrow we will show you an exclusive look at season two of the Cuphead show when I co-host Netflix's Geeked Week, which will include new show and game announcements. It streams at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And that's not all. There's more Summer Game Fest all weekend long. Coming up next is the Day of the Devs Indie Showcase with I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine, then Devolver's Marketing Countdown to Marketing. Tomorrow, after Geeked Week, there is the Epic Game Store Showcase at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, with news on Rocket League and the Tribeca Game Showcase. And Sunday, don't miss the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase with a look at the future of Xbox and Game Pass. Now we have some exciting news for Nintendo Switch and PC fans about Neon White, a game where you play an assassin from hell who slays demons for the chance to ascend to heaven. We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. Got ten days here. You day, you mission from Almighty. You think you can win me over by showering me with gifts? Uh... Good thinking.
We've shown you lots of games today made by huge teams. Now it's time for a game made by a single father in Poland. Over the past year, he's brought on some help to bring his vision for a fast-paced action game, Midnight Fight Express, to life. Let's take a look. You know the saying, get knocked down, get up again, that whole spiel. Well, it's time, partner. Time to rise up, together. actually going through with it, while I sat at his side, see lives as dollar signs, had the stink of corruption all over me. You know who put it there? Nah, not him. Me. Well, I ain't wearing it anymore, and neither are you. Tonight, we wash this whole damn city down. Such a cool game, and I'm happy to announce that a PC demo of this game is going live right now on Steam and will be part of the Steam Next Fest next week. I really want more playable games to get in the hands of you guys at home, and that's one of them. Check it out. All right, joining me now is Megan from Digital Extremes to talk all things Warframe. Megan, how you doing? I'm so good. My fellow Canadian. I know. We got a lot. I just see. happen to always have these Canadian teams on the show. I don't we know how that works out, right? It's okay. We do. Well, we have a great connection. We've also done a lot with Warframe over the years. And I know right now, anyone watching on Twitch for more than 30 minutes, this show is going to get a special Twitch drop, right? That's right. I already have seen people getting it. Yes. So it's very exciting. She's right there, loud and proud. Protea, 30 minutes for watching. Thank you for letting us kind of take over oh. your special events category. But she is there and she is for you if you are properly linked up. No, Warframe, you know, as I said, we've done a lot over the years. You guys have done incredible things with the game. And I know. You have TennoCon coming up in July, which is your big kind of event of the year to reveal what's next. What, what can you tell us? Well, I can't tell too much, yeah. Um, but yeah, July 16th, 2022, it's a digital event again this year. Uh, today, actually, we just launched the digital items for it, so you can get some in-game goodies, some really cool cosmetics, some merch, all that really great stuff went live today. But of course, the reason I'm here yes. is to, you know, kind of debut, we have our Tenno Live during TennoCon, which is our big reveal of the night. and. We usually do a little bit of a, a gameplay, a little bit of a demo, and I think a lot of people can suspect what it might be, yeah. but I'm here to kind of confirm what it is that Tunnel Live is going to show. And what is that? Can I say it? Yes, I think you can. Okay, you're going to get your first look at the Daviri Paradox. It's finally! Finally, I know. I know it's been a couple years. Uh, but Daviri Paradox is going to be what Ten Alive is all about, and I'm so happy. Uh, the team worked really hard on the teaser you're about to yeah. see for it, and I'm just really proud and excited to show it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here on Summer Game Fest. Let's take a look at that right now. My child, my friend, what was done is done. New dangers, new choices await us now.
Next, it's time for a new look at Honkai Star Rail, an upcoming open world space RPG. Yeah, a lot of space today from Genshin Impact Studio Hoyaverse across mobile and PC. This studio continues to deliver and this new trailer reveals for the very first time a new and exotic realm players will be able to explore. Listen, you are in a daze right now. You don't know who you are, why you're here. None of that matters. In the near future, you will encounter many perils. You will meet companions who treat you like family and embark on unimaginable adventures. to soothe the souls of honored guests. Welcome aboard the Sienjo La Pool. And that's not all from Hoyaverse. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Zenless Zone Zero, their next major new IP. It's a futuristic urban action game. I have to say I'm blown away by what I've seen so far. It was announced a couple weeks ago, and it has the detail of Genshin Impact with a fast-paced action style. Here is the world premiere of a brand new look at Zenless's notable characters, armed enemies, and world of danger. One of my favorite reveals last year was TMNT Shredder's Revenge, which reminds us all of the Turtles arcade games back in the day. Well, it's nearing the end of development, and the team wanted to use SGF as a way to reveal one exciting aspect of the game they've been keeping under wraps until now.
How far will you push humankind? Humankind allows you to shape your civilization by combining a multitude of historical civilizations from the ancient to the modern era. One Piece is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, and Bandai Namco is bringing the mega popular franchise back to video games with One Piece Odyssey. Monkey D. Luffy and his crew of pirates are off on their next adventure. This trailer reveals the setting, a mysterious island where Luffy and his straw hat crew become marooned in this exciting upcoming JRPG. The Straw Hat Pirates journeying along the Grand Line. This August, Soul Hackers 2 from Atlas launches, and we've got your first listen to the English voice cast with this quick new look. So many new games featured across SGF events, you might be wondering how to plan for your summer gaming dreams. NerdWallet can help you find the smartest credit card to reward your gaming purchases at NerdWallet.com. The Epic Mega Sale is going on right now. Save up to 75% off top PC titles with an additional 25% off eligible products. And it wouldn't be the Mega Sale without the free games vault featuring Maneater. Be sure to claim your copy before the sale ends on June 16th. Tune into the Epic Games Store Twitch channel for our summer showcase on June 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. We're taking a look at new announcements and updates from PC titles heading to the store this year and beyond.
gonna get hit with the unexpected in Mario Strikers Battle League. In this no holds barred soccer-ish sport, chaos reigns supreme. So prepare to do whatever it takes to claim victory. So much fun, it hurts. Mario Strikers Battle League, only on Nintendo Switch. Game rated everyone 10 and up. Hi. My name is Carl, and I'm a developer on Metal Hellsinger. You know how in some games where the music's really good, you feel compelled to move and shoot to the beat? But what if you had to? In Metal, the better you are at slaying to the beat, the more intense everything gets. And we have vocal performances from legendary artists like Serge Tankin from System of a Down. So while headbanging isn't mandatory, we do recommend it. Our demo is live now on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation platforms. So go check it out and slay to the beat. That one was Metal Hellsinger coming later this year from Funcom, a rhythm shooter with metal music. And right now, as I mentioned, a demo has launched on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation for you to play for free. Next up, a new game launches tomorrow, The Quarry from Supermassive Games. This spiritual successor to Until Dawn stars David Arquette and an all-star cast. It's getting great reviews, and this is one of those binge-worthy teen horror entertainment experiences where your every choice shapes your story and determines who lives and who dies at a camp in upstate New York. Here's the first look at the launch trailer. Family is the most important thing in the world. But if your whole family, you know, like every last one of them decided to jump down the bottom of a well, and they're all just hanging on the end of a rope. How can one person be expected to pull them all back out? You can't. So you pull on that rope and you're just gonna fall right down to the bottom of the well with the rest of them. And what's the point of that? What? There is a lot more to this than you realize. Like what? Kidnapping, murder, cover-ups. I think the whole Hackett family is in on it. You have no idea what's going on here. Not a goddamn clue. All right, let's do this. Run. Who should I call? 911. You mean 911? Who says 911? Goodbye, cruel world. We gotta get out. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die. This isn't a ghost story. It's a creature feature. It's really happening, and you're all in it. This is going to get a little messy.
Them's the rules, you noob. Back at the Game Awards, we were proud to reveal Nightingale, a shared world survival crafting game from Inflection Games up in Canada. Now it's time to give you a brand new look and deeper look at the game, including its innovative realm card system that lets you impact things like the weather pattern, resources, and challenges in this procedural realms. Here is your exclusive new look. You're alone in the realms, I'm afraid. The portals are a mess. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. Given how fragile you humans are, I'd say that staying fed, dry, and rested should be your priority. If the portal arch is inactive, you'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. Beware them. Foul things lurk in the interrealmic void, waiting to get in. Be ready with your axe pick. The Saints are marching in on August 23rd with the reboot of Saints Row that we revealed last year at Gamescom. And today, we're happy to announce the launch of the Boss Factory demo across PC and console, which lets you design and set up your character. And since it's Saints Row, you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this one. Check it out. Guys? You gotta do something to capture people's attention. So what do we build next? Me. I want all the power! Yeah, I want all the power! I want all the power! I want all the power! power. We are so good. good at this. Which fool wanna challenge me? Got a pack on your back with a stack, can't relax, cause you know there's no guarantee. I ain't never kept as a fact, don't react to the test of the mess and the cavalry. This is a perfect dinner and a show, baby. Outside of the moon, I 
Next, we've got an exclusive first look at extended gameplay of Warhammer 40k Darktide, Fat Shark's follow-up to the critically acclaimed Vermintide series. Darktide promises intense four-player co-op action and terrifying enemy hordes to team up against. And it's out on September 13th for PC, on Steam, and exclusively on console on Xbox. Manufacturer on HL7836 is heading towards a power system's failure thanks to a bit of heretic sabotage. So you're going to restore the cooling and hopefully save the day. Get in. Access the operations array and use the cryonic rods to flush the system. Preferably before something explodes. Head on through the ventilation tunnels and look for an access point. This way! Move it! <laughs> Bloober team is known for psychological horror games like Blair Witch and The Medium. Today, they are ready to reveal their latest creation made completely in Unreal Engine 5 for a visceral horror experience. It's a return to the world of Layers of Fears. Get a dose of this. Someone once said insanity runs in our family. Let it run. This October, Gotham Knights arrives. 
Batman is dead, and it's up to the Batman family, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Robin, to protect Gotham. To give us an exclusive new look, let's head to Montreal to hear from executive producer Fleur Marty. Hello and warm welcome from WB Games Montreal. I'm Fleur Marty. I'm the executive producer on Gotham Knights. Today, we are thrilled to share more with you on one of our beloved knights, Nightwing. This showcase is the first in our character series, and we're really looking forward to share more with you as we continue working towards our launch on October 25th. So I hope you enjoy the show and stay tuned. I had nothing. And then this city became my home. Its people became my family. Gotham gave me everything. It deserves to feel safe. That was Gotham Knights, and now we welcome, oh, look who it is, Neil Druckmann from Naughty Dog, uh, co-president of Naughty Dog. Uh, great to have you with us, Neil. It's been a, uh, an eventful day on the internet for Naughty Dog fans. And, uh, I think we jinxed ourselves. We were joking about last night, like, watch the ass assets leak, and yes. lo and behold, that's what happened. Well, the good news is there's some stuff that hasn't leaked that we have lots to share with people about uh, all things at Naughty Dog. But... First of all, it is a, you know, it's a big month, actually, for Last of Us fans, because uh, Last of Us 1 and 2 both launched in June, and it's nearing its two-year anniversary for Last of Us uh, Part 2, which is, is hard, to, hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, um, you know, nine years for Last of Us 1, two years for Last of Us Part 2, and we still hear from fans. They're still sending us letters and art, and these characters in this journey and this world mean so much to them. Um, and it's, it's just been kind of amazing. Like Last of Us Part Two, early this year, passed a pretty big milestone. It sold over 10 million units. And that kind of support, that kind of success, um, we're so grateful to our fans. It has allowed us to grow as a studio, and now we can take on multiple projects, more than we've ever had at the same time. Multiple projects, okay, very interesting. So uh, what can Last of, Us, Last of Us fans expect in the future from you? Thank you for asking, Jeff. Yes. Uh, so one of the things we've mentioned a while back is what started out as a multiplayer mode has evolved due to the team's ambition. They really wanted to do something beyond what we've ever done before at Naughty Dog. And we felt the way to do it justice is to make it a standalone title. And over the, they've been working on it for the past two years. Ambition has grown. And we're not quite ready to fully unveil it, but we're ready to lift the curtain a little bit and just give you like an update of where we're at. Okay, well, uh, what can you tell us about this new standalone multiplayer game? Yeah, so uh, we have a concept art that we want to show. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what I can tell you there Whoa. is that this game is big. Okay. Um, it's as big as any of our single player games that we've done, and in some ways bigger. It's got a story. Um, the way we're telling that story is very unique to this game. Um, it's got a brand new cast of characters. It takes place at another place, uh, another part of the United States. It's like a city might be somewhat familiar, some people. I'm sure our fans have already figured it out. Um, uh, and it's, it's, it's really cool. And it's being headed by Vinith Agarwal, um, Anthony Newman, and uh, Joe Padnatti, all veterans of Uncharted and Last of Us. And you're going to see a lot more of this game come next year. Next year. So we wait till next year to hear more next about that year. one. Okay, well, very exciting that uh, this has evolved, and I mean, that concept art looks incredible. I can't wait to see Naughty Dog storytelling fused with multiplayer live game. Uh, it's, it's something special. I, we can't wait to show it either. 
Okay, well, um, that's not all. We also have something that I've been reading about on the internet every day. It feels like up in <laughs> Calgary, they're filming the Last of Us show for HBO, right? Yeah, so uh, for the past year, um, you know, we've teamed up with Craig Mazin of Chernobyl fame and HBO to adapt The Last of Us into a TV, uh, TV show. Um, they've been filming, and uh, it's pretty incredible. The stuff I'm getting back, when we're looking at back of Naughty Dog, we can't help but feel emotional because not only is it so good and the quality is so high, it's so authentic to what we've made in the game. Um, and uh, I, I just can't, I couldn't be proud of, like, again, Craig and that whole crew and everybody that's up there. Uh, and they're actually their last day of filming is tomorrow. So the entire series, last day of filming is last tomorrow. Last day of filming is tomorrow. Craig is up there right now wow. kind of wrapping it all up. Uh, so it's, it's pretty close. It's closer than you might think. And you actually got to direct one of the episodes? Yes, uh, I think that really speaks to the kind of collaboration and trust that exists between Naughty Dog and HBO. They invited me to direct one of the episodes. Um, I think we have an image from the episode I actually directed. Ooh, okay. Um, so we could first look. Let's take... <clears throat> so wow. you can see uh, this is a certain museum that yep. players might know from the game. Um, and I really have to talk about Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey and not only directing them but seeing them do all the other episodes, They've thrown themselves at these roles um, for a whole year, watching the nuance that they bring to these characters, their relationship on and off camera. I couldn't help but think about Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. It felt so similar to the chemistry those two actors had when we made the game. Um, and it really feels like this is gonna be something special. And I, I will say this will be the most authentic video yeah. game adaptation yet. Well, I mean, that first image that they put out, it just, I mean, it feels like the video game, everything that I've seen, both public and other stuff, makes it feel sort of super legitimate, as you said, and that's awesome to see uh, Joel and Ellie from, from the front side now for the first time. Um, so we'll see more of that uh, next year that's coming as well, right, Sirius? Uh, you'll hear about it very soon. That's, that's okay. all there right now. All right. Well, Last of Us HBO, very, very exciting. Uh, and I hear you actually have a couple actors from the show who are uh, going to join we us We happen to have a couple actors here that are part of the show. We should bring them up. Okay. Come on up. Oh, what's up, guys? Oh, hello. <laughs> Surprise. Tro Troy's back again. Hello, I know. Ashley. Oh, good to see hi. You. Good to see you. Uh, I'm a little confused, though. I, I thought maybe Pedro Bella, but Troy Ashley out here uh, from the game, right? So uh, when Craig and I started working on the show, almost one of our very first meetings, we said, Troy and Ashley have to be a part of it. Um, and we're such fans of, like, the talent and the help, like helping us create Joel and Ellie. Um, we felt like it was so important that they become part of the show. And it wasn't, it's, it has to be more than just like, kind of like a wink to the camera and like a cameo. Okay. These are real roles that we're keeping on the wraps for now. Uh -huh. uh, but man, I was, I'm bummed that I couldn't be there with you guys when you filmed your stuff. That, there's been so much it's, stuff it's I so, feel like. so, good. <laughs> on the internet, there's so much like talk about what's being filmed. And I think that's, you guys have kept a complete secret that you, so you were up there and you, you filmed your roles by now, obviously. Oh, keeping yeah. secrets yeah. with this franchise is kind of old hat. Like we've Except had. Except for few, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Except for the day. Uh, it was, it was one of the hardest things for us to do is to let, not let people know that, because we're so proud of it and the work that we did. We worked hard. The, the crew, I have to say, um, when I walked out on set, um, to be met with literally every person that I met on that crew uh, is such a fan of this game, and they all knew what it was that they were working on and committed to working on this project because of their fan and their love for the for the game uh, was one of the greatest. It was like I was coming home to friends. Yeah, I, I the attention to detail, the crew was amazing. Bella and Pedro are man. I, they're so perfect, and it it we we've, we've been trying to sort of describe that feeling of sort of seeing them in person. It's it's like, it's like the characters coming to life, but it it it's so much more than that. I feel like I can't fully explain it, but I am so excited to be a part of it, and just I can't wait to see it. I think it is going to be so good. It's, it's, so I love the story. I love no, just being I'm, a part of I'm the I'm so world. excited about the series and the fact that you guys are going to be in it and undisclosed role. I'm so fascinated how it's going to sort of bob and weave and, and, you know, are these characters we know from the game that they're playing? New characters? Can you tell us anything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can tell you. So sneaky. All right. Well, we're so excited. To Maybe it's already on Twitter by now. <laughs> hey. All right. Well. Let's talk about what was on Twitter earlier uh, today. Lots of talk about uh, the idea, or really what's happening, is it looks like you guys are remaking the 
original game, and this is like a ground-up remake, is that right? That's right. Uh, we wanted to give people the definitive version of the, the first game that wasn't encumbered by any technology. Uh, wanted to find a way to get even closer to our original vision. Uh, we're able to do it on the PS5 and PC, and instead of talking about it, let's look at it. All right, let's take a look at The Last of Us Part 1. So why'd you leave Boston? I've been on quite the adventure, little brother. I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. It's got everything to do with that little girl. You know, I've never been this close. It's the outside. So is that everything you hope for? Can't be any worse out there. Can it? Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. And in this world, that's good for one thing. Get you killed. I can take care of myself. How many close calls have we had? I get in trouble down there. You make every shot count. I got this. Hope you know how to use that thing. I've had some practice. Truly one of my favorite games of the past decade. Guys, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, we uh, haven't seen that yet. Yeah, you're watching it in real time. Yeah. Uh, it's Because you did these I mean, these performances you did a decade ago. Yeah. You didn't go back in. I mean, you used the original performances. Yeah, actually, we, we came up with a process where you could take the original uh, animation that we did for the faces and kind of like retarget it on these new rigs that have a lot more fidelity. And then the animators went back and We're studied. We're side by sides here, just how much it has changed. That you went and you redid the models, rebuilt everything. Everything was re uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, same art director, re-art directed the whole thing from the ground up. Um, but the the great thing about these faces is that um, they're closer to the original performance. Our, all the animators went and studied those videos and got it closer to what you did on set than we could have achieved before. Um, and that's just like one of the things um, we could talk about, like this brand new AI, like all the combat is, like, is, is redone. Um, just uh, the fidelity of everything, 60 frames per second, all the stuff you're getting on the PS5. Again, we wanted to give, knowing because of the show, because this, they're all, all new players for PS5 and PC, yeah. we wanted them to have the definitive version of The Last of Us. Amazing. Well, now you guys get to replay. I mean, when was the last time you guys played the game? I, I actually played it again just to refresh my memory before working on the show. Uh -huh. um, I was a just a glutton for punishment, and I went straight from playing uh, yeah, part one it. straight into <laughs> part two. Um, and so the last time that I played literally would have been two years ago since we're celebrating the anniversary of part two coming out. So, I mean, it looks like I'm definitely going to be up for another yeah, playthrough I can't, with this. I mean, yeah, I can't wait to go back. It was oh, such I can't a, wait. You guys did such an amazing job on that original game. and It's it's really when you play it, when you see it in motion, it's really yeah. night and day from what, what it used to be. I imagine that, you know, the, think of The Last of Us 2 combat, but kind of that back in The Last of Us 1. Well, it's the whole, like, all the yeah. new animation system, the new AI system, everything we've learned on, like, Uncharted 4, Last of yeah. Us 2, we apply to this, wow. again, to give that definitive version. Just to give a quick shout-out, uh, this project is headed up by uh, Matthew Gallant and Sean Sky. Okay. Uh, and you'll hear a lot more about it and see a lot more about it over the coming weeks leading up to the release September 2nd on PS5. All right. And well, shortly thereafter on PC. We will look forward to it. You, Neil, you've talked a lot about games directed by other people what, what are you directing you still making games still making games okay. uh, i haven't given up my my day job uh it's a little early to talk about it. maybe if someone in place wants to leak it then we can yeah. talk about it now uh <laughs> otherwise uh we'll save but it. you do have a new project do have a new project okay. uh but we'll save it for another summer game fest okay <laughs> okay well we'll see we'll try and save it all right <laughs> Troy, Ashley, Neil, thank you so much for dropping by Summer Game Fest, and I am so excited that The Last of Us is returning, as you said, in September. So thanks, guys. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank awesome. All right. Well, that is going to do it. Thanks to Naughty Dog and PlayStation for that very special uh, look at The Last of Us and the entire franchise and where things are going. Um, 
very, very excited about that. All right, Summer Game Fest continues over the next few days. Coming up right now on this very stream is Day of the Dez with I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine, including an exclusive new look at the Planet of Lana. And then the Devolver Digital Showcase. Tomorrow, we've got Netflix Geeked Week, which I'll be co-hosting, and the Tribeca Games Showcase streaming, along with the Epic Games Store Showcase. And then finally, Sunday, it's the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. You can stream them all at SummerGameFest.com. As for me, I'll see you again in August when we are back live in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom opening night live on August 23rd. And then the Game Awards will return in December live from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. And finally, I'm excited to share that Summer Game Fest will return in June 2023 as a digital and in-person event to bring the gaming community together. Thanks for being a part of Summer Game Fest. And remember, there are more events and announcements to come. We'll see you soon. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Day of the Devs. Day of the Devs. What? You don't know what Day of the Devs is? Day of the Devs is the greatest and definitely the oldest independent game festival that exists. It was started over 10 years ago by Double Fine Productions and I Am 8-Bit to celebrate uh, the best independent games out there and bring them to you, the fans. We want to bring developers and players together to get together, play games, and have a great time. It used to be a physical event only in San Francisco, but now it has gone digital so the whole world can enjoy it. And we're really excited this year to be part of uh, Summer Game Fest. Uh, so sit back, relax, put on your party hats. This thing? No, I'm supposed to put this on? That's right, everybody. Put on your party hats. Everybody. Everybody. That's right, that looks good. Now we're cooking. Put on your party hat and enjoy Day of the Devs. We got a new one today. This is from a good friend Michael Frey and Rafael Munoz. Previously, Michael made a game called Kids with Playables that we published at Double Five Presents, and this is his new one. It's about the limited time we have on Earth told through the life of a fly. This is called Time Flies. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. You might know my work from a game called Plug and Play. I co-founded company called Playbills where we made a game called Kids. Uh, but today we're going to talk about this guy in my upcoming project that is a collaboration with Rafael Munoz, uh, who is the principal programmer on the game. The project we're collaborating on is called Time Flies. Time Flies is about our limited time in this world. In Switzerland, where I'm right now, we have a life expectancy of maybe 84 years. In the US, it's about 77 years. So you have a little bit less time to achieve the things you want in your life. In Time Flies, the things you can achieve are nicely prepared on a bucket list. Uh, this is a very small part of that bucket list. Uh, so these are the things you can do in the world.
The game is coming to PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC and Mac uh, sometime next year. Uh, please visit timeflies.bus where you can sign up for the newsletter uh, so you get updated when it's out uh, or you find a link to the Steam page where you can wishlist the game. Thank you. Our next game is Planet of Lana, the debut title from Sweden-based Wishfully Studios and published by Thunderful Publishing. The gameplay is reminiscent of dark side-scrollers like Inside and Little Nightmares, but the vibes could not be more different. Who are these enigmatic enemies? What do they want with Lana's sister and her world? And what other secrets are there to uncover in this beautiful, boundless environment? Hello, my name is Adam Schanius and I'm the creative director at Wishfully. We're a small indie game studio in Sweden making Planet of Lana. In our game you play a young girl called Lana, who is forced out on a mission to save her sister that has been taken away by an invading robot army. Early on in the game, Lana meets the mystical creature Mui. You quickly develop a strong bond and friendship to Mui, and she proves to be both intelligent and loyal. Being her own personality, Mui also has things that she's afraid of. But being small and agile also has its advantages. For example, being able to reach places that you can't. She also has this special ability she can use to control some of the strange creatures of this planet. Together, you have to make it through both the harsh and beautiful environments of Novo past dangerous robots, through deep and cold caves, unraveling long forgotten mysteries that all lead to your destined future. Planet of Lana is really a labor of love and we're very excited here at Wishfully to bring you what we believe is a truly unique adventure. And beyond the companion based puzzle solving and hand painted art style, you will experience an engaging story with twists and turns that hopefully will stay with you long after the credits have rolled. Planet of Lana is coming to Xbox and PC this year and you can wishlist right now at Steam or sign up at our newsletter at planetoflana.com. This next title from Two Star Games is quite literally an on-the-rails shooter. You and your little yellow train with its mounted machine gun and exquisite collection of bobbleheads face off against a demonic clown-faced train who is hell-bent on devouring human flesh. This is Choo Choo Charles. Hey, I'm Gavin, I'm the solo developer behind Two Star Games and I'm currently making Choo Choo Charles.
It's an open world horror game where you navigate an island in an old train, upgrade it over time, and then use it to fight an evil spider train named Charles. If you pump enough lead into his face, I'll probably encourage him to run off and find something else to eat. You have one goal above all else, and that's to summon Charles to a 1v1 and fight him to the death. To do that, you'll need to explore the open world, looting abandoned areas and completing missions for the locals to gain powerful new weapons and scraps that you can use to upgrade your train's speed, armor, and damage. You'll need to leave the relative safety of your train and venture out on foot. This is where things get really dangerous, with Charles constantly roaming around looking for his next meal, and camps of shotgun-wielding cultists looking for someone to feed to him. After collecting three heavily guarded gems from abandoned mines around the island, you'll place the gems on one of the shrines, angering Charles and drawing him to your location. Best be careful out there, because it might be unwise to wander too far from your train. If you do encounter Charles while you're roaming around, it doesn't matter what you do now, because you have truly angered the beast, and you'll either escape with your life, or see it flash before your eyes. If it sounds like something for you, be sure to follow and wishlist Choo Choo Charles on Steam. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really does mean a lot. We've got a special one for you. It's very personal and near and dear to I Am 8-Bit because it's a I Am 8-Bit Presents published title. It's called Escape Academy and think of it like Hogwarts, but for escape rooms. It's from developer Coin Crew Games and they hail from the arcade amusement space. They've designed escape rooms in real life. Better they talk about their game than me. Here they are. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Wait, am I, I supposed to say I'm the... <laughs> Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. We're the founders. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Oof, okay. This is... Uh, I hate that. Alright, once, once more with feeling. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle. And we're Coin Crew Games. When Coin Crew Games was founded, uh, we were actually building real-world escape rooms and arcade machines. But when the pandemic hit, we needed to pivot. So we decided to take those learnings, building real-world escape rooms, and transpose them into a digital format, and thus Escape Academy was born. Good luck trying to hack me without sufficient power. The probability of your expulsion, high. Escape Academy is an escape room adventure game that you can play either single player or co-op. You play as a student at this titular mysterious escape academy where you get to master the art of puzzle solving and train to become the ultimate escapist. What are you waiting for? A room full of gas is no place to relax. We're all fans of escape rooms, so when we couldn't find a digital authentic escape room experience, we decided to make one ourselves. Walls are often misleading at the academy. 
Escape Academy isn't just a puzzle game, it's an escape room game, and it brings that play pattern home. We have a huge amount of puzzles in this game, and they never repeat. And in addition to that, you can solve every puzzle using just your mind, no dexterity required, although you may want to bring a paper and pencil. The academic theming gave us the leverage to create a wide variety of rooms that support the narrative and put players in situations they would never find themselves in in real life escape rooms. When we were designing the game, it was really helpful to have uh, the experience of both playing a lot of escape rooms and designing real world escape rooms as sort of a design anchor to buoy us to. I did not anticipate the rodent assisting you. Bad turmeric. Sadly, that rat will be no help in bypassing my lasers. We really took our time to create an eclectic cast of students and faculty members that help guide you throughout the academic journey of Escape Academy. Building on the lessons that you get in each room and raising the stakes throughout your journey at the Academy was definitely a design pillar we wanted to make sure it came through in the final game. I am not, not here so well. Analysis, I have succumbed to disco fever. Escape Academy is coming to Xbox, PlayStation, and PC on July 14th and will be available day one on Xbox Game Pass. And you can wishlist us today on Steam. We'll see you at the Academy. Thanks. This game's for all those fans of organization out there, all those organizers. It's from a studio called Max Inferno, and it's a game about getting things lined up just right. It's called A Little to the Left. Inferno. Yep, and we're really excited to share with you today a cozy puzzle game that we've been working on called A Little to the Left. A Little to the Left is a game where you sort, stack, and tidy up the house. In each level, puzzles are hidden among regular household objects, and you solve them by arranging items in a very particular way. Many of the levels have multiple solutions. It's all about observation and imagining the different structures that could be at play. The game takes inspiration from our own home and some of our own little tendencies. Another big source of inspiration for the game is our cat, Rookie, who should be around here somewhere. Occasionally, this cat will show up on the periphery of your gameplay and undo your tidy work, just to shake things up a little bit. The game starts off pretty simple, but as you progress, the logic behind the puzzles becomes a little more surreal. There's a lot to tidy up in a little to the left. Actually, every day brings something new. 
with the Daily Tidy Delivery, you get even more out of our favorite puzzles. And you earn fun badges, too. Well, thanks for stopping by. We hope you enjoy A Little to the Left when it releases later this year. See you later. Bye. I've been excited about this one ever since it was announced ages ago. It's from developer Gummy Cat. It's called Bear and Breakfast. And the title says it all. You're a bear, you run in bed and breakfast in the woods, and it's really freaking fun. We're debuting a brand new animated trailer, a bunch of gameplay you've never seen, and finally announcing a release date. I'm Ioana. And I'm Radish. We're from Gummy Cat in Romania. Today, we're showing you our first game called Bear and Breakfast. It's a laid back management adventure game where you build and run a BB in the woods, but you're a bear. In Bear and Breakfast, you play as Hank, a young, curious bear from Silver Valley who lives in a small home with his mom and two best friends. We grew up on management sims. Games like Theme Hospital were big inspirations for us, but we also wanted to make a game that tells a story alongside the usual management stuff. So it turns out that humans are coming back for some reason, and they need a place to stay. There's old rundown buildings all over the place, and you're just the bear for the job. The game follows a linear story that you advance by solving quests. A lot of them involve finding materials, building rooms, crafting furniture, and decorating stuff. The actual furniture you do make awards different kinds of points. For instance, beds give comfort, showers give hygiene, that type of thing you have to make sure that your room scores are high enough to satisfy whatever your guests are asking for. Each type of score comes with its own challenges. For example, later on you'll need to cook food for your guests through a minigame. There's a lot more to bear in breakfast but you can play at your own pace since the game won't rush you. Oh, and there's definitely no creepy subplot hidden somewhere in the forest. We're very excited to be part of Day of the Devs this year, and we can't wait to introduce you all to Hank and his friends when Baron Breakfast launches later this summer. Thank you.
don't want to say a lot about this next one. Uh, it's full of secrets and puzzles and mystery that are best discovered on your own. It's a beautiful game from a studio called Shared Memory. It's a pixel art metroidvania full of interesting creatures. It's called Animal Well. Hi, I'm Billy Basso. Today I'm going to be showing you a game I've been working on called Animal Well. In Animal Well, you explore a surreal and sometimes dangerous pixel art labyrinth that is filled with secrets. As you explore, you'll encounter uh, various creatures, but it's not always clear if they're friendly or not, so it's best to proceed with some amount of caution. Throughout the game you're going to find various items that will give you new abilities and help you solve some puzzles. Every item in the game has multiple uses, but you're going to have to experiment if you want to figure out what they all are. Animal Well is a pixel art game. Uh, that's not just a pander to nostalgia, it's that I'm viewing as a technical opportunity. A 4K TV screen has 144 times as many pixels, but that means I have 144 times as much processing power to apply to each pixel. Throughout the game, you'll see a lot of things like fluid sims or dynamic lighting effects that haven't really been used in a pixel art game before. Designing Animal Well is a layered experience, so what that means is the base layer is something the average person can play through and enjoy to completion. But then there's a second layer, which for most games you would consider this part like 100%ing the game. There are lots of hidden items uh, in nooks and crannies throughout the world. They're not obvious and they you might need some help to find these. The third layer has puzzles that don't really present themselves as puzzles. They might go unnoticed for years, potentially, or they might require some community collaboration to solve. Also, there's a, there's a puzzle in this video that may require some community collaboration to understand. But the first 10 people to figure it out uh, will get a free copy of the game at launch. And then while you're doing that, you can maybe wishlist it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Next up is Nyad, a colorful exploration game where you play as a water nymph, traversing a zen and peaceful world. This game comes to us from High Warp, a solo developer from Spain. Hi, I'm really happy to be part of the 10th anniversary of Day of the Devs at this exciting Sound of Edition. I'm Elwin from High Warp, a solo dev in the studio from Spain, working on bringing to life very unique and personal games. I would like to say with you a preview of Nyad a relaxing and colorful exploration adventure of flowing by a river. I put all my love creating every part of this game, so please enjoy. The 
journey starts with the birth of a little water nymph at the spring of the river. Naya will grow up and mature, obtaining vitality from floating leaves and flowers, learning to swim like a duck, dive like a fish, dash like a frog, finding other adorable friends like butterflies, rabbits, snakes, turtles, cockroaches, and much more. Help them to find their way, avoiding obstacles and dangers, using your skills. You will immerse through a lot of beautiful places like a deep forest, a dark cave, a youthful creek, and more. Water, symbolizing life, starts pure and fresh, and little by little it will be fading into dark. You can sing to regenerate the nature, making sprout flowers in the path, and you must do your best because the humans hmm, are controlling this river goal. Humans create their own fake rivers, like these noisy roads with strange smoke creatures. You are the guardian of this river, and that seems to be a difficult task, but don't be afraid, because a tiny cloud will take care of you from the sky. The beautiful hair of Naya is like its vitality. You can make it grow up under the sun rays, change its color, even tie small flowers on it. Creating Nayad, I focused on a wholesome experience. Enjoy at your own pace, exploring and flowing. Nayad will be available for PC and consoles by the end of this year. Thank you for watching. If you ever find yourself longing for the good old days, then why not take a trip back to the Stone Age in this cooperative life and farming simulation game from Sodaden and Cryptico. Hunt and gather to care for your settlement, explore the ancient world around you, and best of all, become a friend to the mammoths. This is Roots of Pacha. Hi, I'm Timo, co-founder of Sodaden along with my brother. Hi, I'm Karen, the narrative designer. We're based in San Diego with the rest of the team in Argentina. Hola a todos, I am Dancer, the main artist. And I'm Johnny, Timo's brother. We are the team developing Roots of Pacha. A farming sim set in the Stone Age where you help your clan develop the ideas that shape humanity. In a time when there weren't stores to buy seeds or anything else, you'll build your village from the ground up. Instead of using money, you'll transform the world around you by contributing and working with your clan. Starting small, you'll explore the regions of this new land discovering plants and resources along the way. Many of the ideas you develop were the cornerstones of early civilizations like farming, domesticating animals, and the creation of tools that are now common. Ideas will build on one another, and after a while, you'll find your community transform. You'll venture into the caves to meet the spiritual world, to try and explain who you are and why you're here. The game's Stone Age setting was inspired by the book The Clan of the Cave Bear. Roots of Pacha is set in simpler times, but the society is still complex. For example, finding something to eat went from satisfying a basic need to making a dish and creating a reason to gather. As you discover ways to make life easier, you'll find time to experience all the fun Pacha's world has to offer.
You'll get to know your clan, meet others living around you, and maybe even find that special someone. Our love of farming sims started with the first Harvest Moons, and Stardew Valley took it to the next level. With Roots of Pacha, we want to make our own unique contribution to this genre. We're working on this project with all of our hearts. We're super excited for you to play the final version. In the meantime, we have a brand new demo that just went live today. Thanks for having us. Muchas gracias. And now, I am very pleased to present a world premiere from our friends at Us2 Games, the folks who brought you Monument Valley, Alba, and a bunch of other really, really cool games. Here it is. At Us2 Games, we really try and take what's meaningful and great about games and deliver that to everybody. So with Monument Valley, we made people care about a character for the first time if they've never really engaged with games very much. And with Albro Wildlife Adventure, we took open world games and packaged that into a kind of theme about saving an island that more people are going to want to engage with than just the hardcore. And with this game, what we really want to do is take these genres that we really love, like roguelike games and turn-based tactics, add a little bit of sports game in there as well, and themes about dreams and conflicting fears, and really package that together into something that feels really unique. In the game, you play the role of Dester, his young person in their early 20s, who's coming home for the first time, having not left home in the, the very best way, their relationship with their mother and their family and their friends. There's a few of them that were a little bit broken, and they were broken because they didn't really have the words to say. And their father, who used to be a big part of their life, unfortunately passes away, and they don't have those tools and that person to lean on to, to bridge that gap. So they manage to go home, they find this old ball they used to play with their dad, and when they try and fall asleep with it, they find themselves in a world between worlds, neither asleep nor awake. And when they're in this, they can explore these moments, these memories, and solve these creative problems through a, through a ball game. And when they do that, they find the right words to say to confront these people. The people we're going to be meeting in Dasta's dreams are people who were significant to Dasta before they left town a couple of years back. And there are lots of people they don't know quite as well, too, and some people who've been shaped by Dessa's impression of them in their dreams. But they've all had a profound impact on Dessa's life. These characters are really interesting because all of them are interwoven as part of Dessa's story, but also with each other. They don't just appear as abstractions, but they really feel like a part of the makeup of Dessa's background. One way or another, the people that Dessa meets throughout the game help Dessa become who they are today and they've taught us to a number of different things, like standing up for themselves, taking risks, expressing themselves, and more. There are a few different themes in the story, but I would say that certainly loss is a big part of it. Finding yourself, courage and perseverance, and reawakening. No pun intended. It feels like we've been able to put a lot of our, ourselves into Desta. Um, the same is true for pretty much all of our games, but Desta in particular is very personal to a lot of the members of the team. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to some of the themes of maybe having ghosted a friend and not being sure how you could like get back in touch with them or dwelling over how you might have said something in a conversation and like having that play over and over in your mind, which is like one of the core themes of the game. It's definitely got more depth and more game mechanics than anything we've made before and it's being designed from the ground up to be a multi-platform title. We're really looking forward to telling you more about Dest of the Memories Between in the coming weeks and the coming months. This next game is called Shim. Uh, it's a shadow platformer. You're a little blobby character platforming around inside shadows in a game with a really cool minimalist graphic art style. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm About and I'm the developer of Shim. And I'm Niels from Exonice and I help About develop Shim. We're located in the north of the Netherlands in a town called Leeuwarden. We are a team of two plus the talented people at Moonseller who read audio.
Skip is a game where you move around in shadows. You play as a Skip, a shadow creature. As a whole, Skim is made to be approachable for a variety of players. At its core, it's about jumping around in shadows and platforming towards the end of a level. Each shadow has their own Skim. The player plays around as a Skim of a human. However, this Skim is separated from their person and it's up to you to find your way back. In the game, you will also help other Skim characters who have also been separated from their shadow. You can help them by finding their object. Skim takes big inspiration from the feeling of playing as a child. Playing imaginary games with made up rules. Move around in shadows and jump to the next shadow. Check it out and follow us at skimgame.com. Hi everyone and thank you Dev the Dev for having us this year. I'm Anne, the manager of Asobu, a community hub for indie game creators in Tokyo. We have a space where people can come to work and meet other people, do small gatherings. And we are helping Japanese devs by introducing them to platforms, console publishers, helping them on marketing, or as usually they don't speak English, helping them to apply to overseas events like this one. And we're also doing a lot of online contents and streams, uh, like our big Asobu Indie Showcase, which will be aired this summer in English and Japanese, or our monthly stream in the collection, and podcast, and many other things you can check on YouTube and Twitch. But first, uh, let's check two really cool Japanese titles. Fox and Frog Travelers, The Demon of Arashino Island is a 3D action adventure game with a Japanese inspired atmosphere. You will play as Fox, her girl who finds herself on Arashino Island and starts traveling with Frog. Tori Gates, who stole Lantern and Neon, gives light and color to the island. But something is lurking in the shadows, inching even closer. Fox and Frog Travelers is developed by Rias, an illustrator and concept artist that came up with the idea for it, based on one of his illustrations. Fox and Frog Long Journey Through the Night is planned for release in a few years. First game of the young solo developer Yo Fuji, Goodbye World is a narrative game about two young indie game creators, the Shai Kani and the extrovert Kumane. Mixing influences from comics like Ghost World and games like The Beginner's Guide or Moses 3, Goodbye World is a tale about the passion and struggles that comes with game creation. Through 13 chapters of the story, rendered in beautiful pixel art in a resolution close to the Super NES and Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Goodbye.
My World is due out on Steam later this year. If you like those games, don't hesitate to wishlist and to follow the devs on Twitter. And if you are interested by uh, Japanese indie scene or indie games, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, on Discord, chat with us and watch our indie game showcase, which is uh, coming this summer. And thank you again for watching and Day of the Death for having us. The process of moving to a new city can be daunting. Our next game, Birth, from solo developer Madison Carr, who hails from Chicago, explores the idea of quelling loneliness through this puzzle adventure. Hi, my name is Madison, and I am making a game called Birth. Birth is a point and click puzzle game about living alone in a large city. In order to quell your loneliness, you decide to create a creature, a friend, a partner for yourself, by collecting spare bones and organs that you find while traversing the city. You will explore libraries and post offices and museums and cafes and apartments that don't belong to you. In each of these buildings, you will meet creatures and you will get to know them by searching through their personal belongings. Their laptops and phones, their cabinets and their notebooks. Within these personal belongings, there are puzzles. Some are physics-based, some are pattern-based, uh, some are abstract. There are no instructions, and you are rarely doing the same thing twice. Alongside the main game, there are optional hidden tokens that you can find to unlock secret buildings and treasures. Bird comes out this August. I made this game with my whole heart and I hope that you like it. In our next title, How to Say Goodbye, you play as the ghost of a person who's recently died and is embarking on the journey of accepting their own death. The mechanics underscore the message that there's always a way through grief. You may get stuck, but you can always stop, reevaluate, and keep moving. It's all just part of the puzzle. Hi, I'm Florian, co-author of the upcoming narrative puzzle game, How to Say Goodbye. In How to Say Goodbye, you help a group of quirky ghosts overcome various obstacles and conundrums by reorganizing the level as you like. Moving one tile will also push the surrounding tiles. The puzzle elements are only moved around, 
but never removed. So, just like the Rubik's Cube, the puzzles never end up in a state where you can't solve them. Follow various characters looking to discover why they are still here and how to move on while trying to escape the grasp of an evil wizard who doesn't know how to let go. How to Say Goodbye tells a story of loss and grief, but we intend the experience to be as gentle, kind and positive as possible. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, please wish this the game. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you. Wasn't that a great show? And a great cake, and it's all gone. And so now we have to say goodbye. I hope you liked that. I hope you liked all the games. Thank you to all the developers for making such fantastic games and for bringing them here for everyone to enjoy. Special thanks to all of our generous sponsors. You've always been there for us, and we could not do this without you. PlayStation, Idea Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, Epic Game Store. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Extra special thanks to Dose One, the Magic Man, for supplying all the beats and sound effects and tunes you hear in every summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs. We couldn't have done any of this without you, or at least it'd be really quiet uh, and kind of suck. We're not done with the Day of the Devs 10th anniversary just yet. If you go to dayofthedevs.com and sign up for our newsletter, you will be amongst the first to hear about all the excitement that's to come this year. Uh, other than that, thank you so much to everybody who watched, and we'll see you next year. Bye! We'll see you next time. Aha! You thought it was over, but it is actually not. Day of the Devs continues with a special after-party performance by the one and only Peter Berkman of Anamanaguchi fame. He's debuting new music from a game you've probably never heard of. It's called Little Nemo and the Guardians of Slumberland. And the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's debuting on Kickstarter at this very freaking moment. Enjoy, see you later. Thanks for tuning in to Day of the Devs, Summer Game Fest Edition, bye.
Teams and Online Harassment Hotline is a text message-based, anonymous, and confidential emotional support hotline, and it's created specifically for the gaming community. Because we're gamers, and creators, and we want to help each other. So, how does it work? Well, you text us, and we listen. Our hotline is 100% anonymous. We can talk about anything you need to, and only what you want to. The Games and Online Harassment Hotline is an inclusive resource for anyone, no matter how you identify. If you feel that you need emotional support, you can start right now by texting SUPPORT to 23368, and our qualified responders will be there to listen to you, free of charge. Reach out, get help, and let's make this community a better place to work and play.